Hi, hi. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, maybe we can wait for two more minutes to for other audience to join us. Hi, Dui. Welcome to today's webinar. Hello, good evening. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's get started. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. And my name is Hao Qi. I'm a research scientist from Gem Farmtech. So my team and I are responsible for the development of neurodegenerative disease models and also the wild mice. So uh, today I would like to introduce you the wild mice project and the latest progress of this project. And uh, uh, the contents include four parts. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about the most commonly used labor laboratory mice at present, the inbreed mice. So uh, inbreed mice such as B6 and uh, BBC have been widely used and studied for hundred for years. And we know well about the phenotypic characteristics and the genomic information of these inbred mice. And the gene editing on these inbred mice is well established. So these are all the advantages of uh, using inbred mice. Uh, and on the other hand, due to years of inbreeding and selection, inbreed mice have lost many important mutations related to phenotypes and uh, disease. Uh, when I when I were a little boy, I, I once uh, captured a wild mouse, um, and I kept it in a bucket and put and I put some food into the bucket. But the wild mouse uh, was very anxious and refused to eat food, so it died two days later. But uh, for inbred mice, uh, okay, they live in small cages, and for long periods of time, nearly its whole lifetime, with little space uh, for movement and plenty of food to eat. So, uh, but they are complete, completely normal. And as for people like me, if I were uh, quarantined in home during the pandemic, uh, don't need too long, just a couple of weeks, I will definitely uh, get fat and even get depressed. So uh, this kind of, the normal of inbred mice uh, is not really normal. It means the inbred mice are in, insensitive to disease. After a long time of inbreeding and uh, captivity, inbred mice have lost many important mutations uh, related to disease to adapt to the captive environment. Uh, therefore, due to the lack of uh, genetic diversity and uh, uh, insensitivity to disease of inbred mice, there is a gap between the preclinical studies and uh, uh, clinical trials. So the results of preclinical uh, studies are usually uh, not, not that consistent with the results of clinical trials. Uh, here is a picture showing that uh, if toxic, uh, toxicity failures can be prevented at the preclinical stage, the percentage of successes of the drugs can increase from uh, 11, uh, can from 11 to more than 50. So uh, if we can increase genetic diversity of inbred mice and uh, reduce the gap between the preclinical uh, trials and the clinical trials, it will greatly increase the successes after entering the clinical trials. So um, mice in the wild 
live in the natural environment and uh, need to adapt to various pressures in the environment. So they have abundant genetic diversity and the sensitivity to uh, disease will also be different. And we did the whole exon sequencing with the wild mice samples and confirmed that uh, more than uh, 20,000 of SNPs, uh, 20,000 SNPs differences uh, between uh, 33 samples of wild mice involving more than 9,000 uh, 9, genes. And in, uh, in addition, there are also great differences between the wild mouse and the inbred mouse like uh, B6 and BRBC. So um, between these two, uh, between wild mice and the inbred mice, uh, there are more than uh, 6,000 SNPs involving uh, more than 3,000 genes. So uh, to generate better uh, mouse models for preclinical trials, we started the wild mice project to increase the uh, genetic diversity of inbred mice. So uh, we generated this kind of uh, from some substitution strings uh, in uh, through two methods. So the first method is to cross wild mice and uh, the inbred mice uh, with, uh, by IVF, and then uh, we back cross uh, with, and then back cross with B6 for more than ten generations. With a uh, genome sequencing, we can set up uh, SMP panels to identify the region on the specific uh, chromosome. Uh, for example, chromosome one, uh, which part of the chromosome one is from the inbred mice and which part is from the wild, wild mice. So in this case, uh, after uh, more than 10 generations of backcross and selection, we can get the uh, chromosome substitution strings. And uh, we now uh, have, have 11 chromosome 1 substitution strings generated in this way. And uh, there are several advantages of chromosome substitution strings. First, uh, the substitution of an entire, uh, entire wild mouse chromosome can greatly increase the genetic diversity of uh, B6. And this is what, what we want to we want to do. And uh, also, uh, the other 19 chromosomes are still from uh, B6. So the background of these mice are still uh, clear. And uh, we can consider this kind of uh, chromosome substitution strain as a new type of inbred strain. So it's very easy to breed and uh, uh, to keep the phenotypes. And we choose to generate chromosome one substitution uh, strains first, not only because of the, the number, the, the chromosome one, the number. Uh, the first reason is that uh, chromosome one is the longest chromosome in mice. So uh, technically, if chromosome one can be successfully replaced, the other chromosomes will not be problems, right? And the second reason is that we uh, perform the WGS analysis in uh, with wild mouse uh, wild mice samples and found that on chromosome one, uh, SNPs that differ between uh, wild mice and B6 are enriched in genes involving in metabolic uh, pathways, such as uh, cholesterol uh, biosynthetic process and also the metabolic, uh, metabolic process. So we, wa we wanted to know if uh, we replace the chromosome one uh, whether we will change, we would change the metabolism of B6. And after we got the 11 strains, we phenotyped and screened this uh, chromosome one substitution strains. And we found that indeed more than half of the strains differ differed from B6 in terms of metabolic uh, phenotypes. And we published the part of this work on um, a, a journal named Metabolize recently. And it's online now, and you can check in de details if you are interested. And uh, moreover, among these uh, 11 strains, there is, a, there is one strain named B6 chromosome one, YP1, and uh, with strain number uh, 750. Uh, has very prominent metabolic phenotypes. So we did more work on this strain. And by the way, uh, this mouse was named YP1 because uh, the donor mice uh, is from uh, Yangpu district, uh, district Shanghai. Uh, so we use the YP uh, short name for uh, Yangpu to name it. 
Okay, uh, during our phenotypic screening, we found that this YP1 mice developed a severe obesity, even fed with chow down. And this is a photo of uh, YP1 mice and uh, B6. And you can directly distinguish, uh, distinguish uh, YP1 mice and B6 by size, right? And the difference uh, in body weight uh, between YP1 mice and B6 is not present at birth but begins at eight weeks of age. And the weight gain of YPR mice was mainly in fat. So uh, it's like, well, uh, so this kind of uh, phenotypes reminds me that it's like we, uh, when we reach the middle age of life, uh, our body weights are easy to be out of control and we will, uh, we will have weight gain and we will become, uh, we will uh, develop more easily to develop obesity. And we also tested the blood of YP1 mice and found that uh, with the increase of body weight, the uh, cholesterol of YP1 also increased significantly, uh, like the total cholesterol and the HDLC and the LDLC. So, uh, and the fat content in the liver also increased uh, as shown here by the uh, HE staining and the oil rest staining. So uh, YP1 mice developed a spontaneous uh, hypercholesterolemia uh, and fatty liver disease. And in terms of blood, glu uh, blood glucose, YP1 mice displayed only mild uh, hyperglycemia and insulin resistance compared with B6. So it's, uh, it seems like a metabolism of glucose is still okay, while the lipid metabolism is significantly uh, disordered. So uh, we further use the metabolic phenol cages to check the metabolic features of YP1 mice. And based on the change in IER, we uh, confirmed that uh, YP1 mice preferred to use glucose as its metabolic substrate uh, compared to B6 mice. Uh, this, uh, this indicates that YP1 mice are maybe more adapted to metabolize glucose. And we further designed uh, an experiment to investigate the differences between glucose and the lipid metabolism in YP1 mice. Uh, so uh, both YP1 uh, mice and B6 were fed with three different types of doubt. Uh, one is the chow doubt, and the second is the chow doubt with sugar water, and also the uh, third is the high fat doubt. So as we expected, uh, YP1 mice developed much more severe obesity and when fed with high fat diet, here the, uh, the G6 group, and they can reach 50 grams uh, with only eight weeks of feeding. Uh, and there is no difference between the uh, chow diet group uh, and the chow diet with sugar water group. So uh, YPR mice developed more severe obesity with more fat, but not with more glucose. Uh, in addition, uh, we found that the weight, weight gain of YPR mice, uh, YPR mice with chilled out here, the G4 group, uh, was similar to that of B6 fed with high fat out, the, the yellow one, the G, G3 group. So um, maybe the uh, chilled out for B6 might be a sort of high fat out for, for YP1 mice. And uh, to further explore the mechanisms of abnormal YP1 metabolism, uh, we conducted RNA with liver tissues, uh, and more than 20, uh, 200 genes were differently expressed. And uh, through bioinformatic analysis, we found that uh, those differently expressed genes were enriched in metabolic disease, uh, disease related pathways, such as uh, uh, clast clastasis. Uh, fatty liver disease and ins insulin resistance. So it's consistent with the phenotypes of the YP1 mice. And we also found that, uh, we also checked the lipid and the glucose metabolism related genes. And we found that the ex expression patterns of lipid metabolism in YP1 mice uh, are significantly alerted. And we also compare the liver gene expression in YP1 mice with other obese mice like DIO and BKSDB. It was found that the pattern of liver, of liver gene expression 
of uh, 11 weeks old uh, YPR mice were close to that of uh, DIO mice. And they shared some uh, enriched pathways uh, in geo analysis. And this data also supports that the troll doubt for B6 might be a sort of high fat doubt for YPR mice. And in addition, uh, there are also some uh, diff differently expressed genes are not shared by YP1 mice and uh, DIO mice. So we checked those genes. Uh, we checked those genes and we found some hub genes uh, by protein-protein direction analysis. And interestingly, uh, most of these uh, unique genes uh, of YP1 mice lo are located in on um, are located on chromosome one. So these genes might be the real drivers of YP1 mice metabolic phenotypes. And most of this, uh, no, uh, most of this uh, genes we found in the bi uh, bioinformatic an an analysis were very normal and they were not, uh, they were not well studied in the, meta in the lipid metabolisms. So, uh, Based on this data, we proposed uh, a hypothesis. And by uh, replacing chromosome one, the metabolic uh, characteristics uh, of the wild mice are uh, inherited by uh, YP1. And the food source of the wild mice uh, are mainly the, is many carbohydrates. So they are more adapted to metabolize uh, the uh, glucose uh, and not that adapted to metabolize the lipid. So uh, YPR mice also preferred to use glucose as a metabolic substrate and are not adapted to metabolizing uh, lipids. In this case, YPR mice is more sensitive to have to uh, high fat doubt and the true doubt for B6 is actually high fat doubt for YP1. Therefore, uh, YP1 mice fed with true doubt displayed uh, lipid metabolism disorders and developed obesity and hypercholesterolemia, while the phenotypes of glucose metabolism disorders are not very obvious. And uh, moreover, uh, during the metabolic phenocage experiment, we unexpectedly found that the YP1 mice had significantly reduced uh, local motor activity and increased uh, food intake. So uh, the development of the obesity in YPR mice also uh, could also be partly due to this uh, unhealthy behaviors like eating more and uh, uh, with less exercise, just like human. So uh, in this case, we think that the causes of obesity in YPR mice are very uh, similar to those in humans. Uh, uh, like uh, genomic factors and the lifestyle and also the food intake are all responsible for the obesity of YPR mice. And uh, as a normal mice model, uh, how should we use this YPR mice? Uh, first, uh, I think if you want to study the mechanisms of metabolic disorders, you can choose YPR mice and hopefully you can find some new target genes and mechanisms. And then if you are looking for a DIO mice model with less time of induction and more severe uh, phenotypes, YPR mice is a very good choice. So uh, with a 60 60 percent high fat diet, uh, uh, chromosome one YP1 mice could reach uh, 40 grams in only six weeks. Uh, compared with uh, uh, as for B6 mice, uh, th uh, they need more than uh, 12 weeks to reach uh, 40 grams. And if YP1 mice uh, are, fed, are fed as the same as B6, it will develop much more severe obesity and uh, also the hypercholesterolemia, as, as revealed by the results. The, uh, both the total cholesterol and the LDLC uh, in the YP1 mice fed with high fat doubt uh, were uh, significantly higher than the uh, B6 mice fed with high fat doubt. And uh, in addition, YPR mice uh, fed with Western diet can also uh, obtain a more severe hypercholesterolemia phenotypes. Uh, and also, uh, we also checked the, checked the NASH phenotypes 
And uh, when YP1 mice fed with a uh, Western diet for around 20 weeks, and all, it will, uh, this, uh, this mice uh, displayed more severe uh, Nash phenotypes than B6 mice fed with Western diet. And also the near field activity score was uh, more, uh, was high, higher than the B6. And uh, uh, okay, uh, after seeing these uh, significant uh, significant differences between YPR mice and B6, you may ask, uh, YPR mice okay have uh, much more severe phenotypes, but what if the drugs could not rescue the phenotypes and have no functions in this uh, chromosome one substitution stress, right? So we have also uh, tested the efficacy uh, effects of multiple anti-obesity anti and uh, anti-hyperlipidemia drugs in YPR mice. For example, the uh, TZP uh, is a dual agonist of glp one r and uh, GIPR. And uh, it's an it's a anti-obesity drug. And uh, according to the efficacy test, uh, this TZP drug works very well uh, for weight loss um, also reduced food, also reduced food intake, and uh, lower the body uh, body fat ratio in a dose dependent manner. So uh, YP1 mice can be used as a good model for uh, anti obesity drug efficacy study, like the like TZP. And uh, um, for the hypercholesterolemia uh, drug efficacy study, uh, we tested a. Uh, we tested the THR beta agonist uh, named the MGL3196, uh, and the commercial name was uh, Restomatyrol. Uh, so uh, the thyroid hormone through activation of its uh, beta receptor in hepa hepa uh, hepatocytes plays a central role in liver function and uh, uh, affecting a range of healthy parameters from level of serum, serum cholesterol to the pathological buildup of fat in the liver. And the THR beta action is, is key to proper liver function, including regulation of mitochondrial activity and uh, also the, uh, uh, such as breakdown of liver fat and the uh, control of the le level of normal healthy mitochondria. So patients with NASH have reduced the levels of uh, T THR beta receptors activity in the liver. And uh, a company named uh, Madrigal recently announced that uh, announced the positive top line results from the phase three uh, NASH clinical trials of this uh, THR beta agonist for the treatment of NASH and the liver fibrosis. So uh, this drug uh, remain uh, this drug, uh, the THR beta agonist, is a promise, promising drug for hypercholesterolemia and NASH. And we tested this drug in our YPR mice, and this uh, drug uh, significantly uh, rescued the hypercholesterolemia. Both total uh, cholesterol and the LDLC were reduced. So uh, YP, uh, YP1 mice can also be used as a new model for anti hypercholesterolemia drug efficacy study. And uh, 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 in addition to the YP1 mice, uh, we also got another uh, interesting model, the ZZ2 mice, and uh, with uh, with the string number seven six five. So uh, the the donor of this mouse uh, comes from uh, Zhaozhuang City, Shandong Province in in China. So we named this string as ZZ, uh, a short name for Zhaozhuang, and. Uh, uh, this mice, uh, ZZ2 mice, uh, obtained a series of uh, behavioral phenotypes similar to wild mice. Uh, for example, in the uh, Morris Otter mice, uh, ZZ2 mice showed better learning and uh, memory abilities. Uh, ZZ2 mice can get get to the platform uh, faster and remember the position of the platform better as indicated by the longer time spent in quadrants and the more plat uh, platform location crosses. So um, 
if you consider these two mice as a uh, as a type of one mice, it is uh, it's much easier to understand because the wild uh, environment is more complicated and there are natural uh, enemies outside. So the wild mice must have better spatial learning and memory ability so that, uh, so they can survive, right? And uh, in the open field test, uh, so these two mice were not willing to go to the middle uh, middle zoom. And uh, in the forced swimming test, uh, the immob immobility time was shorter and the desire to survive was stronger. So here is a radio to, to show the differences. And uh, 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 this one is the uh, this is the radio of the ZZ2 mice. As you can see, the ZZ2 mice uh, were uh, uh, were were struggling and were uh, and uh, showed a great desire to survive. While the embryo mice, the B six, uh, embryo six just lied on the altar, and uh, they they uh, they gave up for <laughs> they gave up for the uh, survive. So uh, you. This, these behaviors are also similar to the behavior of mice in the wild. Uh, you, can, you can never see a wild mouse stay in the center of the living room and wait for you to catch it, right? So wild mice uh, usually move around corners, not in the uh, open field or the central area, so to uh, avoid getting caught. And uh, since the open field test uh, can also reflect the emotional uh, status of mice. Uh, so after seeing a significant decrease, uh, decrease, uh, uh, decrease the time in the central zoom, uh, we uh, suspected that uh, maybe uh, the ZZ2 mice might have uh, some emotional changes. So we further <laughs> did the sugar preference test and found that uh, sugar preference rate of male Male ZZ2 mice significantly decreased, and uh, consistent with it, with this result, uh, we found that the serotonin in male ZZ2 mice, uh, the mice brain was lower than B6 by comparing the neuron transmitters uh, in the, in ZZ2 and the B6 brains. So this suggests that uh, ZZ2 mice exhibit uh, depressive or anxiety-like behaviors. Uh, since the since the previous data of uh, Morris automates and other behavioral tests indicate that uh, ZZ2 mice uh, may uh, may be more sensitive or more good at the spatial uh, perception, uh, we suspect that the limited space may lead to this emotional change in ZZ2. So we housed uh, ZZ2 in larger cages uh, here. The uh, uh, the uh, yellow group and also the orange group. And uh, then performed a sugar alter preference test. And we found that uh, ZZ2, uh, the, the sugar preference of ZZ2 mice was uh, rescued. So uh, we think, we think a small uh, space uh, may, may be a cause of depressed like behavior of uh, this ZZ2 mice. So uh, compared with uh, inbred mice, the wild mice uh, is uh, closer to human uh, susceptibility to disease. Uh, when wild mice uh, like the uh, YP1 and also the ZZ2 uh, is, uh, is kept in a small cage, like humans are, are quarantined in home. And they will, uh, these mice will develop uh, diseases such as obesity and depression. So in this case, uh, the wild mice can uh, stimulate human better compared with uh, inbred mice. Sorry. So um, uh, at present, uh, we are constructing uh, chromosome one to chrom chromosome 19 uh, substitution strains. And we do this work in a more uh, effective way by using a uh, balancer chromosome techniques. So uh, in a brief, uh, with with Cree and the Lux P, uh, we can invert the entire chromosome of uh, the mouse so that the uh, homologous uh, recombination of the inverted region can be greatly uh, suppressed. Uh, 
So uh, we don't need to backcross for more than 10 generations uh, to get the chromosome substitution mice. So uh, it, it's a more effective way to uh, construct the chromosome substitution stress. And uh, uh, there are currently more than uh, 190 wild mice uh, under construction, uh, more, uh, 10 for each chromosome. Uh, with increased genetic diversity, uh, the wild mice, uh, we hope the wild mice can simulate patients better and uh, uh, these mice can reduce the inconsistencies between preclinical and the clinical studies. And uh, okay, that's all the contents uh, and thank you, thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, you can just ask in the, in the Zoom. Okay, uh, so Wei Mei Yan asked, uh, I'm interested in immune system of wild mice. Do you have wild mice showing different phenotypes uh, in immune, immunology? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so we now have uh, 11, uh, we now have 11 uh, chromosome one substitution stress. And uh, uh, the ZZ2 mice I just mentioned, the uh, the mice with a uh, wide with depressed uh, with depressed like uh, depression like or anxiety like uh, behaviors, um, this mice uh, displayed uh, some phenotypes uh, related to immune system. Um, we found that uh, this ZZ2 mice, uh, the fur of these mice uh, lost uh, were lost during the. Uh, Around uh, at around three months old of age, so uh, we suspected that maybe uh, the small space and is a stress to the this ZZ2 mice because this mice is more sensitive to the space, and uh, so uh, these mice were uh, stressed, overstressed, and then the immune system of these mice were uh, overreacted, so uh, it exhibited like. Uh, so these mice displayed some phenotypes uh, like uh, related to uh, autoimmune disease, like the the AD. Yeah. So and uh, what's more, uh, so we now uh, have a uh, chromosome one substitutions uh, stress, right? And we also uh, checked the uh, immune uh, the the immune system related genes on uh, by the whole genome sequencing analysis. So uh, the so the chromosomes, the chromosome uh, 17 uh, on this chromosome uh, in the mice, there are many genes uh, related to like uh, immune system, like the MHC2 uh, genes and uh, some other genes. So uh, after we uh, after we get the chromosome 17 substitution strains, uh, maybe we uh, we can find some uh, interesting wild mice. And uh, uh, related to uh, immune system, yeah. Okay. Do we have uh other questions? Okay. Uh, so about the wild mice project, uh, which chromosome will be uh, changed next? Uh, chromosome two or other chromosome? Okay. Uh. The next one is not a uh, chromosome two, uh, it's the uh, chromosome 17, as I just mentioned, because we want to check uh, if we uh, replace chromosome 17, uh, whether the uh, where, whether the chromosome uh, substitution strain will have, uh, will display some uh, interesting phenotypes related to immune system. Yeah. Okay, uh, is there any other question? Okay, so uh, if not, uh, uh, I would like to end this uh, Zoom meeting and uh, thanks for your attendance and your attention. Bye-bye.